What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over how you can get easy crown wins in Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 2. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and comment down below how many crown wins you have so far this season, and how many you would like to get this season. If you guys are somewhat new to the channel, I make one of these videos at the start of every season, and it's kind of a summary of kind of like the meta of the season, what you want to be doing during the different stages of the game, and what you want to be doing in-game. And kind of fitting all of that into one video, simply, it, a lot of stuff is going to be summarized and kind of not explained as much as I would if I had an entire video on that topic. So I will have other videos linked in the description where it's just one video about some of these topics. So as far as where you want to land this season, I think there's a lot of open spots. Just pretty much anywhere you want to go on the map can work. Last season, you had to be very concerned about like getting to a boss POI quickly after looting your POI or landing at a boss POI. That way you could uh, be able to customize your weapons. But they changed how that works this season. So I feel like I can land pretty much anywhere and have a decent game. I really enjoy that. I did post a video yesterday about kind of some low key landing spots if you're interested in that. But I really like kind of how open the map feels this season. With the meta this season, I think it's pretty simple. Either a gatekeeper shotgun or a frenzy auto shotgun. I think the gatekeeper shotgun is really good. And kind of as the season has gone on, my opinion of this weapon has kind of grown over time. For your spray weapon or AR, I think the Warforged AR is best. And then the Reaper sniper rifle is still in the game. So I think having that as your third weapon is very good. And it's just kind of the meta of this season, like last, kind of revolves around sniping at times. So having the sniper and being able to throw out insta kills or 100 damage body shots is nice for heals I, I think chug splash big pots uh shield fish whichever you can get works just fine i'm not too picky on any of those or like the flowberry fizz whatever i get is what i get and i'm kind of chill with that and then for mobility i think the shockwave grenades are significantly better than the icarus wings because the icarus wings leave you very exposed and basically grow your hitbox when somebody is using the wings their hitbox or what will register as a hit when shot is the entirety of the wing. So it makes it very easy for people to beam you out of the air. So I think shockwaves are significantly better than the Icarus wings. And like last season, I think cars are incredibly helpful or the G-Wagons are incredibly helpful, not only for getting around the map faster, but having that mobile cover at all times uh, and being able to travel without potentially getting sniped. I feel like the more prominent snipers are in the game, the more high value cars are. Uh, radio towers have also returned this season, but they made a few changes. Now the bosses, I feel like, take longer to eliminate, which is one thing. But also this season, only two radio towers spawn per match instead of three. And now there is no longer a 100% spawn rate radio tower near Reckless Railway. Uh, with these towers, if you were unaware, you can actually see the tower as soon as the match starts. Like you can just look at the map and see if the tower is there. And then if the tower is there the boss will spawn like 30 seconds into second zone. So you can kind of like plan this out when you're landing or when you're on the battle bus or when you jump out of the battle bus, see where the towers are and kind of pick where you land based on that or just kind of know like, okay, I got to rotate from here a little bit earlier this game to try to get to this tower, you know? If you are very concerned about these radio towers, I think fencing is probably one of the best places to land because there's two nearby fencing and then the radio tower in between Snooty Steps and Pleasant Piazza, I think is kind of within reach if needed. Uh, fencing typically isn't as contested this season as it was last. So I feel like I can typically kind of loot the POI and get all the way over to Pleasant Piazza by the time second zone, uh, by, by the time the boss spawns, which is nice. For weapon customization this season, you, you no longer need to open vaults to get the mod bench. There's now these weapon bunkers across the map that will open up in third zone. And like Radio Towers, there's several spawns for these bunkers per game, but only a few of them will spawn. It's not like every bunker opens up every game. And also like the Radio Towers, you can kind of tell if a bunker will open up or not before the time comes. So if a bunker is going to open in third zone, there will be like supplies outside of it, like these boxes and stuff. And then there will be no chains on the bunker door. If it isn't going to open, there will be no supplies outside. And then there will also be a chain on the door kind of signifying that this is not going to open so typically after getting the radio tower and seeing what the next zone will be i like to kind of check bunker spawns in the nearby area or a bunker spawn that i think will be good for the next zone 
and then try to get there before third zone actually starts not only to see like is it going to open up but also to kind of have control over the area before anybody else gets there because like last season with the vaults people will third party you people will try to come here and customize their weapons because these bunkers not only are good for customizing weapons but there's also a lot of loot in here there's three legendary chests several weapon cases with decent rarity loot and then obviously the mod bench as well uh, if I'm ever in need of shockwaves and there's not any of the shockwave NPCs like conveniently in zone, this is something that I will definitely go for to try to get shockwaves. But I'm someone that pretty much always wants to be customizing my weapons anyways. Um, I've had a few people ask me about what attachments I use. If that is a concern, leave a comment down in this video letting me know that you'd like to see that. But I think the weapon customization is still pretty straightforward and simple. For the Warforged AR, I use 1.3 sight, fast mag, vertical grip, or laser, and then the muzzle brake attachment. On the sniper, I use 4x, fast mag, angled foregrip, and suppressor. And then on the gatekeeper shotgun, I use drum mag and laser. Um, and, and then, again, like I said, with these being a mid-match objective and everybody kind of focusing on them in third zone, you often will get third-partied. And I really don't like fighting in these bunkers. I feel like the fights are like pretty scuffed. Um, if you're in the bottom and the person up top has grenades, it's going to be way less convenient for you to fight that, you know? And if you're at the top and someone's just camping the bottom, you kind of have to like 50-50 them if you don't have any equipment to like force them out of an area. So it's it's just, I don't like fighting these. So I try to get in and out as fast as possible. I want to loot and customize my weapon as quickly as possible and then just get out of there. That way I don't have to have those kind of like random fights and I don't risk getting chained third party because that's another thing. As soon as you fight in one of these bunkers, everybody else hears it and then kind of wants to come and just sit outside and wait for somebody to run out or just to clean up that fight so weapon bunkers are nice I, I like to try to get there quickly and then get in and out as fast as possible that to try to avoid some of those like really scuffed fights the island will also spawn in in fourth zone this season and there is a weapon mod bench on there as well and in chapter four i often suggested going for it and kind of controlling it but in chapter five i really do not like fighting island at all uh, unless i'm like at the bottom near a rift and i hear people on top actively trading shots with a shotgun i'm probably not going to fight it like i've just this island itself like the way it's set up i feel like it's harder to control than the chapter 4 island because with the chapter 4 island you could just get on the roof of the house and then beam anybody that rifts or comes up a zip line uh and then if you needed to drop down to the house i felt like it was just more structured in how you could fight it whereas like i feel like the power position of the house on this island just really isn't even that impactful like i don't like fighting up there and i don't feel like i have control over anything so i often just avoid island this season um and last season as well and when it comes to where you're going to go in zone i think you want to try to go somewhere where island doesn't have line of sight on you if possible like there will be some zones where island is just center of the zone and it's hard to escape it but like somebody just being on island sniping at you can be a real nuisance so i like to try to avoid fighting island and also avoid kind of being sniped by island the medallions are also really nice this season uh there's still medallions you get from eliminating bosses but instead of regenerating shield they give you abilities like the zero point dashes siphon on elimination faster sprint and extra damage and i think these medallions are really good and holding only one or two of them doesn't really give your location away that much when it comes to end game. If you have it from the start of the game, like with the larger zone, people can kind of see the indicator and then have a general idea of where you are. But when you get into end game and the zone is smaller, the only having one or two, it's like it's the size of the zone anyway. So I feel like it doesn't really give you away that much. Uh, so I like carrying like up to three this season. And if I do have my choice of all of them, I usually end up leaving behind the Zeus sprint one because I, I feel like when I have the dashes I don't need the sprint as much and I often mess up my shockwaves when I have the Zeus one so I, I just prefer to have the Cerberus dashes uh the damage and the siphon but I think the medallions are really good this season and that's kind of another thing that you can do either after getting the radio tower after getting the bunker before getting the radio tower if there's any medallion players nearby that you want to kind of take out and get that advantage for yourself I think is Pretty nice to do so, especially the Cerberus dashes. I think fighting against somebody that has regenerating Cerberus dashes is much harder than if they don't have it. And it is like an extra kind of piece of mobility that you don't have to dedicate an item slot for, which is really nice. Um, especially in game if you're not able to get shockwaves or you run out of shockwaves, something like that. When it comes to like how you want to position in game, if all you want to do is win, 
and you've kind of gotten your radar tower, you've customized your weapons, and you're like, okay, so what now? You probably want to try to play dead side of zone as much as possible. And this will be the area of zone that is most inconvenient for the rest of the map to get to. Because when you do get those smaller zones, most of the map kind of has to flow in in the same direction. It'll be the, the side of zone that kind of borders the center map will be like the hot side. And then dead side will be usually the border of zone that like kind of borders the edge of the map where there's like not as many access points in the zone. I'll have some maps on screen now with some zones I drew. The green area would be dead side and then the red area would be kind of the hot side of zone. And you'll see the trend is that typically the red area is what the middle of the map or what the rest of the map would have to flow into. And then the green side, the dead side, is just more inconvenient to get to. And if you have forecast and you see what the next zones are going to be, you have a car after getting your attachments, it's very easy to just drive into like what would be dead zone and then play the rest of the game out from dead side of zone. And you're often going to be less contested. You're less likely to get third partied. Um, and you're less likely to end up in those situations where there's just like four people all rotating in on the same side and then they just kind of all eliminate each other in storm, you know? Um, and that's one of the main advantages of having a radio tower, I think. You can get weird games where, for whatever reason, dead side is more contested. That definitely happens from time to time, for sure. Like, Fortnite is a game where, you know, everybody in the match can make their own decisions. So you'll get some weird games where things play out in a unique way or in a way that they typically wouldn't. But for the most part, if you put yourself in dead side of zone, you're going to have an easier time making it to end game. Uh, and usually make it there with like more heals more equipment less contested and it just makes everything a lot easier when it comes to the partial and moving zones which are like kind of the next stage of the game the partial zones are when half of the circle starts out in safe area and then the other half is in the storm and then as the zone closes the area that was in the storm opens up into being safe area and with these zones i think it's ideal if you can kind of get into that area that was previously storm that's becoming safe. Uh, if you can get there before anybody else, it makes your life a lot easier because you know that like that area is safe and then the rest of the lobby kind of has to flow into you. If you're getting into that area that opened up pretty late, then there's other players that could have already got there and been controlling whatever. So with the partial zones, you know, obviously every game is different, but with partial zones, I try to kind of put myself on that border of what's safe and storm and then get into the storm storm side as fast as possible when it opens and just kind of get whatever position of advantage there is there and then kind of look back and hold the rest of the, the, the lobby and typically for pubs you only need one or two partial zones for zero build and the game is going to end and build mode games can go longer because people can build and buy time but typically one or two partials in zero build pubs and the game is probably going to end so if you get into that new area first and control it you're going to have a very easy time. Uh, and with this stage in the game, I think it is most important just to worry about consistently putting yourself in that ideal spot or that safe area. And then eventually you'll win the game. Like obviously you can shoot at people if you see any opportunities to get easy kills or you might have to fight people for what would be that like good spot to be. But if you're just overly worried about like shooting at people and not rotating, then it would you'd be surprised how quickly you lose track of time or how quickly some people lose track of time and then they're in storm they didn't rotate at all and then now they're like kind of having to flow into that like super congested side of zone and then just getting chained third partied you just consistently worry about zone putting yourself in the right spot or like the easiest spot to play the game out it's going to be a lot easier for you to get wins you can snipe at people you can shoot at people but worrying about getting a good spot and not making yourself an easy third party or making yourself an easy snipe is more important than a singular kill i think and then just kind of with this stage of the game you consistently put yourself in the good spot and pay attention to how many people are left alive and when you can end the game it's also very important for this because like if it's a 1v1v1 in solos or it's three duos left like your team and two duos left and you hear the other two fighting then you can know that like, okay, if we third party this, that that's game right there, right? But if there's like 10 people left and you hear a fight, then third partying that one fight really isn't that big of a deal. And it's probably better to just like keep focusing on zone, you know? That's what in game is. You focus on putting yourself in the right spot. You get important kills or easy kills if they come.
but you just consistently put yourself in a good spot until the opportunity presents itself for you to win the game. And typically that's going to be when there's very few people left and all of those people that are remaining are actively in a fight. For pubs, there will be AI from time to time in game. And so, you know, it might be a 1v1v1v1, but one of them's an AI and you hear the other two fighting. If you can snipe at that and get an easy kill, that's awesome. And But you don't probably just want to shockwave in and shotgun on that, hoping that the other last person is an AI, you know? Uh, but when the game gets super dead, that's when you can win the game. And that's when you worry about, like, potentially third-partying that fight. Not when there's several people left alive. If that fight doesn't end the game, then you don't need to risk everything on it. And you should probably just keep worrying about putting yourself in the good spots, right? But that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys found this helpful, informative, interesting. Like I said, there will be videos linked down in the description below about more in-depth on some of the things I talked about because it's hard to go over all of this in one video and still have like every kind of detail covered, you know? Uh, if you want those videos, they're in the description. If you enjoyed this, give it a like. Sub if you'd like some more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.